It's summertime, and it's the perfect time to talk about the health benefits of sunlight. Yes, sunlight is good for you, in moderation. Every summer, we see lots of warnings about the risks of too much time in the sun, like sunburn, heat stroke, increased cancer risk, and wrinkles, all of which are real risks. But did you know that there's health benefits of exposure to the sun too? In today's video, I'm going to share seven top health benefits of sunlight. Be sure to stay until the end where I will share how you can get a free download of the benefits and tips to enjoy the sun safely. I live with multiple sclerosis, an autoimmune disease that's degenerative, progressive, and incurable, so I'm always looking for ways to improve my overall health to help me live well with my chronic illness. Getting exposure to natural sunlight can help everyone, not just those with MS or other chronic illnesses. One of the benefits of natural sunlight exposure without sunscreen is increasing our vitamin D, which is really a hormone that our bodies create when our skin is exposed to the sun. Vitamin D is important in a lot of our body's function, which I'll get to later in the video, and most of us are deficient in vitamin D. Did you know that it's estimated that more than 40% of American adults have a vitamin D deficiency? It's true, and low vitamin D levels have been associated with developing MS and MS disease activity as well. A recent large-scale study on MS and vitamin D found that low vitamin D raises MS risk by 43%. Yikes, that's a lot. And in this review on vitamin D and MS MRIs, they looked at 35 articles and found that 60% of the studies noted statistically significant association between vitamin D and multiple sclerosis MRI detected disease activity. In the conclusion, they stated that numerous studies found that higher serum vitamin D levels are associated with decreased new active cortical and subcortical lesions and lower lesion volume. Less lesions? Yes, please. As we're talking about immune function, let's talk about how low vitamin D may be associated with other autoimmune diseases. In this study and the implications of vitamin D and autoimmunity, they say that vitamin D deficiency is prevalent in multiple autoimmune diseases, such as MS, type 1 diabetes, and lupus. Because the vitamin D status is highly associated with the risk of autoimmunity, vitamin D has been implicated in prevention and protection from autoimmune diseases. So that's number one. Sunlight can help us reduce our risk for MS, MS disease activity, and protect us from other autoimmune diseases as well. The second benefit I'd like to talk about is improvements to our circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is a natural internal process that regulates our sleep-wake cycle and other body functions. It repeats roughly every 24 hours and responds to the environment. Circadian rhythms play a vital role in a person's ability to sleep in one consolidated block of time at night and stay awake for roughly 16 straight hours every day. And getting out in natural sunlight every day, if we can, will help our sleep-wake cycle. Getting out in the morning is the best time of day to help set our internal clock. I have an Australian cattle dog named Bungie the Blue Healer, and he loves to chase his frisbee. We get out every morning for a few throws, and I get my morning light. This helps me with my energy during the day and helps me to sleep better at night. Many with MS have difficulty sleeping, so anything that we can do to improve our sleep patterns is important. The third thing that exposure to sunlight can help us with is mood. It can make us happier by increasing our dopamine and serotonin. Dopamine and serotonin are types of neurotransmitters. They're cruelly called the happiness chemicals. Our bodies make them and our nervous system uses them to send messages between our nerve cells. They both play a role in how we feel pleasure. Both of these increase when we get natural sunlight. Studies have been done showing exposure to sunlight helps with both dopamine and serotonin production. Oh, and I'll put links to all the studies and articles I reference in today's video in the description below if you'd like to check them out. A fourth is improved cognitive function. This one's really important to me. Of all the MS symptoms, the loss of cognitive function is one of the scariest for me. Loss of cognitive function can come for all of us as we age and if we have depression. Many people with MS have an increased risk for depression too. This study showed that among participants with depression, 
low exposure to sunlight was associated with a significantly higher predicted probability of cognitive impairment. Well, dang, we don't want that. We need to get out there and get some sunshine to protect our cognition. Number five, it can help maintain strong bones. Increasing our vitamin D can help protect against rickets, a disease that softens and weakens our bones. You may have heard that milk is good for strong bones, but did you know in the 1930s, the United States started fortifying milk with vitamin D to try to eradicate rickets. We don't need to drink milk to get strong bones. We can improve our bone strength by having good vitamin D levels with exposure to sunlight. According to the Osteoporosis Foundation, exposing the skin to sunlight is how we get 70 to 80% of our vitamin D that our body needs. Number six is decreased risk for heart disease. Heart disease is still our number one killer in the U.S., and it doesn't have to be. There are many diet and lifestyle changes we can make to decrease the risk of heart disease. One of them is sun exposure. Exposing our skin to the sun helps it to generate nitric oxide and vitamin D, which lowers blood pressure and provides cardiovascular protection. So let's get out into the sun. Our hearts will thank us. Number seven is reducing the risk of some cancers. In a review, they looked at studies in various cancers, and they found that almost all epidemiological studies suggest that chronic, not intermittent sun exposure is associated with a reduced risk for colorectal, breast, prostate cancer, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. How cool is that? There's a pretty clear link showing that increased levels of vitamin D are associated with lower cancer rates, but they're also seeing a link between modulation of the immune system, circadian rhythm, and folic acid levels, which also help decrease cancer risk. How much exposure to sunlight should we get and still be safe? The Osteoporosis Foundation says to get enough vitamin D, generally we should try to get 10 to 20 minutes of sun exposure on our bare skin. And the Overcoming MS organization has an excellent article that I will link below to help calculate safe sun exposure to ensure we synthesize enough vitamin D. In general, they recommend 5 to 20 minutes a day depending on the UV levels. Are we getting enough sunlight to help with our health? It's important to know our vitamin D levels. It's an easy blood test that we can get through our doctor. Recommended levels of vitamin D vary, but my neurologist likes to see mine above 50 nanograms per milliliter or 125 nanomoles per liter. And check with your healthcare provider for the levels that's optimal for you. I also take supplemental vitamin D and adjust it through the year as needed. You can check out the types that I take in the links below. Sunlight is magic. Exposing our skin to natural sunlight for just 15 minutes a day may help with autoimmune diseases, circadian rhythm, mood, cognitive function, bone health, reduce risk for heart disease, and the risk for some cancers. To get a free handout to download summarizing the benefits and tips for safe exposure, check the link in the comments and the description below. To see more on living well with chronic illnesses, watch these videos next. If you found this video helpful, could you do the favor of sharing it? It's important because it really helps support the channel. Please like the video and subscribe. And until next time, be well.